else is next here? Oh, Heron Preston debut at uh, Paris Runway. Um, this is something that was quite cool to see, actually. Um, and I'll, I'm going to use this word, which I fucking hate when people use it. And only because I have, I've had a couple personal interactions with this person. And I kind of think he's a cool guy. But having seen this collection and seen it, just you know, in real life, whatever, or on the screen in real life. Imagine me calling the internet in real life. Um, but having seen this collection on the screen the other day... <laughs> And, you know, seeing what the work that's gone into um, him getting to this position, I kind of have to say just, you know, out loud that I am super proud of Heron Preston, man. Um, I think regardless of what you may think of his clothes, regardless of what you may think of him as a person, regardless of you may think of whatever that whole crew and, and their self-promotion, whatever it may be, I think you always have to commend um, the fact that he's been able to come into the space, especially the fashion space, and be able to kind of carve his own lane. Um, it's something that's really commendable and something that doesn't go, should be said more, right? I think um, um, Matthew Williams, um, Virgil Abloh, Heron Preston, they're all kind of like showing like runway collections in, in fucking Paris, which is fucking insane if you think about it, right? These guys that started um from doing their bin trill stuff right who would imagine from the bin trill ages to now that we'd get these three different dudes with all their own singular vision doing things on their own right and again it's not they're not kind of doing it um just off the back of whatever friendship they may have because you know that time has long gone right you can't say now virgil's only where he is because of kanye because so much time has elapsed right you can't say heron's there because of virgil either because so much time has elapsed and you can't say the same thing about matthew henson matthew will sorry um matthew williams and um, Lady Gaga reference, right, right? You can't say that because so much time has gone past. He's now built his own body of work for him to reference from. So I think all that is um, amazing. And again, it's for to, for, to see Heron Preston go from bootlegging um, Givenchy Rottweiler tees to this is just insane. Insanely cool and insanely motivating and inspiring for anyone out there that's doing something in the creative space to see that you can do it as well um, in your own kind of unique and, and interesting way. And, and it's even more impressive because Heron Preston was never someone that struck me. He was never like a fashion guy. Um, he was a guy that did cool and interesting projects, right? He was someone that was very... Um, he was more of a maker -y. like he kind of had that kind of sense about him. brand communications uh, an expert in marketing like he's somebody that if he wasn't had if he didn't have his own collection he'd be an uh, he'd be probably one of the best communication managers out there right like in terms of activations in terms of like getting a word out like he's probably one of the best if someone wanted to hire him but he's been able to kind of get with those skills and somehow translate into clothing and maybe the fact that he's not a fashion guy is what makes his clothes even better is what makes his clothes um more appealing i'd say um or i, I don't know like I, I like what he makes i like what he makes um i like what he does I, i'm not i'm not sitting here comparing him to like john paul gautier and stuff whatever but i think for that particular customer for that particular look i think he does it really really well like i think um he is um those kind of Instagram girl outfits, you know, the sort of like uh, crop tops with the il with the kind of uh, pajama, elastic legging pants things, whatever. I think he's one of the most underrated designers in that space. Like he, I think he does really. He, I think he does those um, foot outfits, the thought outfits, right? Those fitness Instagram foot outfits really well, better than probably a lot of designers out there. He really smashes it. That kind of orange tape on the front, the the style written in, in the Russian Cyrillic, like it works really well. That like kind of utilitarian look with it, with the kind of over or covert sexual hints, with the kind of pull tabs and the and the harness and the and sorry, and the harnesses and the waistbands and stuff. I think it works really really well. But anyway, let's get dive on deep to the collection. Uh, and I'll get his penis out of, my, out of my mouth. But um, it looks, yeah, it looks really good. I like this look. This is a look we saw early on with the model at the Off-White show. Um, the kind of um, off-the-shoulder jacket that we saw a few seasons back, in it? When uh, Demna debuted, or it came back into Vogue. People didn't, people didn't really see it for a while. But I think Celine done it a few times too. Phoebe Philo at Celine. But we saw it kind of come back um, into trend or into style when uh, Demna uh, debuted it. I think at the first Balenciaga show, when you had those kind of uh, mountain parkers that were hanging off the shoulder, and then a couple of seasons later, you had those denim jackets hanging off the shoulder too. So I kind of like that look. Um, I'm hoping that it's not just a styling thing, and it's actually like, you know, they've actually been cutting away, because I think the Balenciaga ones were actually had a strap that you could attach to your shoulder that can make it kind of hang off. And uh, I know the Balenciaga denim jacket was kind of cutting away that lend itself to be kind of hanging off of the shoulders a lot more easier, but it looks really cool. I, again, I like the little detail that he's kind of done for himself a little signature orange tab on the outside sleeve again something these are things again that you know just come from maybe the the you know the experience or talent he might have outside of fashion lends itself it's a nice little um design detail that can be spotted off from a mile away which i think is really cool and goes on goes unsaid 
Um, some cool little trainers here that we're seeing. There might be the collaboration. It might not be. I think there might be the inland shoe that Karim debuted. Um, he loves the flame tee with Scott. Isn't it? I think this is one of the kind of like um, signature pieces of um, Heron Preston's kind of personal wardrobe for the most part. Just again, just cool, interesting clothes. Um, I quite like them. Like, I think I'd wear literally everything in this collection. It's all incredibly wearable. It's all incredibly easy on the eye. Um, it fits in with most people's wardrobes, I think, for the most part. I really like those pants as well. They look here with a lady wearing, I think, I'm assuming a Nike collaboration glasses, maybe collection number two. Some nice jackets and bags and boots. And just really cool. It really like resonates with me personally and looks especially like something that like Heron would wear himself anyway as well. So again, um, great collection from Heron. Debuted um, the other day at Paris Fashion Week, which is, again, a cool thing to see. Someone coming from you know, the forums all the way up to the lofty heights of the Paris runway show. Again, just really easy clothes to wear. Like, loads of nice stuff. Again, like, crop top things that he does are fucking cool. I think it's really underrated stuff that he does for women. Um, really smashes it. This one as a co-ed show works really well because I think the Heron Preston aesthetic lends itself really well to this kind of, you know, co-ed vibe because... You know, it's less fashiony and more so just clothes, nice clothes that can work really well in the purest sense of the word. And here's a, a hair person doing his best. Michael Jackson at the end looks really cool, man. So yeah, well done to the guy, man. Congratulations on the show. Well done.